There are many variations on the blue screen process, but in general, the procedure is as follows. The foreground action scene is staged in front of a blue backing and photographed on color negative stock, as in this scene from Mel Brooks' Spaceballs. The color negative is then sent to either an optical printer or an electronic scanner and computer workstation for compositing into the scene. In either case, the mat, of course, is the key element in this process and it may help to explain in more detail how we build it. We're all familiar with the fact that a photographic negative and its positive will cancel each other out if we superimpose them. Well, with color film, we have three color records. In fact, three different films stacked on top of each other. And thus, we can have six potential images, the three positives plus the three negatives, and each of these will be different. It's these differences we're able to exploit in order to make our mats. The first step is to take the original negative, which has the familiar orange cast to it that facilitates printing the negative to a color print film. For this demonstration, we've made a version of the negative that has the orange cast removed. When I place a blue filter over it, we can see that the blue areas of the image will be able to print through to the black and white icon film. The result will be this image in which the windows where the blue screen was seen are clear and, as we can see immediately, it could not serve as a mat because there is obvious, obvious exposure in a number of places besides the blue screen. We can see lights, for example, where there was as much blue exposure as there was from the blue screen itself. And we can also see blue spill all over the floor where the screen was being reflected back to the camera. Besides all that, it's obvious that there's a blue component throughout the whole image. What makes it possible to make the mat, however, is that there's also a red and green component to all these non-blue screen areas of the image. Being at the opposite end of the spectrum from blue, the red component constitutes a sort of chromatic negative of the blue positive we just made. So, if we take our negative and add a red filter, we can see those areas of the image that will print as clear in a red high con positive, namely the lights where there was also as much red exposure as there was blue, and also these areas on the floor where we had blue spill, but where we also had the red exposure that's under the blue spill. On the other hand, there's no red exposure in the blue screen area, so this area will print as black in the red high con positive. Now this image wouldn't work as a mat for the same reasons in reverse that the blue high con print wouldn't work. There's exposure or lack of it in the wrong places in the image. This is the original negative with a red filter. Next, we'll slide in the high con positive made from the blue record of the same negative. You'll see that in both images, the blue screen area is clear, but elsewhere, the combination of the positive and negative images cancel each other out. Therefore, when we expose this to another piece of black and white 5369, the result will be something we call a number one burn-in mat, which is reversed to form a holdout mat. By combining these two images, we can illustrate a very important consideration in the mats that's revealed by this fine white line that we observe here. This represents a very slight space between the two mats, which results in an overlapping or double exposure of just the very edges of the foreground and background images. By contrast, if the images were actually to overlap each other, the result would be an area of the composite image that receive no exposure and thus would be rendered as black. In this way, fringing or mat lines are eliminated. By modifying the exposure and development of the mat image, it's possible to adjust the size of this gap, and this process is known as sizing the mat. 